I welcome you to this moment around God's Word and prayer. We're walking chapter by chapter each day through the book of Proverbs, and today we come to Proverbs chapter 14. This chapter is especially instructive to us in terms of how we read and interpret the Proverbs. I mentioned to you a couple of days that the Proverbs are usually not to be read as promises, but as life principles. And we'll see, especially in chapter 14, that these life principles are phrased in short, catchy ways that are meant to be memorable, but on the other hand, can be understood by everybody. So they don't always deal with the minute complexities of life, but they're these general life principles that are written in short but memorable ways. And there is especially a number of very memorable Proverbs in chapter 14. And I just want to walk through those with you. First of all, in verse 4, where there are no oxen, the manger is empty. But from the strength of an ox come abundant harvest. I don't know how many times I've heard that one quoted in leadership seminars. That, that if your manger, which is a feeding trough, if your manger is to be full to feed the people, the, the animals in the manger, uh, if your figurative manger in life is there to feed and nourish people in your world, it comes from the strength of an ox who's out there pulling the plow and bringing in the harvest. Jack Welch, in his book about the turnaround that he led of General Electric many years ago, he said, you know, change doesn't come by speeches and slogans. Change comes by the horsepower or the ox power of getting the right people doing the right things to actually pull change forward. It doesn't come from slogans and speeches. And this is what's happening. And, and this is why we need strong leaders in our world. Because where there are strong, where there are oxen who pull the plow, who take the lead, then our mangers, our feeding troughs, are filled with grain. Here is another famous proverb, verse 12. There's a way that appears to be right, but in the end it leads to death. There's a way that seems right to people, but it can lead to death. This is actually a horrifying proverb. This one puts the fear of God in me. But Jesus talked about this very principle. In fact, he said, he said, narrow is the gate that leads to life, but wide is the gate that leads to destruction. And we believe of all the ways you can access the spiritual world. There's only a narrow gate. It's through the name of Jesus Christ. Most people in our world, you know, they just want to do what they think is right. But, but there is ways that, that, that people think is right. But the sobering truth is that often it leads to death. But the narrow gate of Jesus Christ leads to eternal life. Here's another one that's not quite as famous, but uh, it, it illustrates for us how the, these are not specifically promises, but they're life principles. Verse 26, whoever fears the Lord has a secure fortress, and for their children it will be a refuge. You know, the New Testament says that that children are sanctified by believing parents, parents who have given their life to Christ. It kind of, even though children, when they grow up, they make their own decisions, they may go in their own ways, but some way there's a setting apart, a sanctifying of those who grow up under believing parents. And these Proverbs don't guarantee if you do the right thing as a parent, your child will follow, follow the Lord's way. It doesn't override other people's free will. But this is a general principle. And, and it's, just, it's just a very memorable way of saying it. You fear the Lord, you're going to have a, the fear of the Lord is a secure for, fortress. It's a healthy way to live. And that health is going to spill out to be a wonderful environment for your job. I'm grateful I grew up in a family you know, that was a righteous family. And so I didn't have all those d addiction and all these things around me. It, it did provide a healthy environment for me as a child. Last verse is, uh, is a really famous, short, memorable, but powerful statement. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin condemns any people. And that, that brings us to our prayer time this, this day that we will pray for our nation. I tell you, whether in our lives personally or in our nation, sin always condemns and brings destruction. But righteousness will always lift you up and righteousness will lift up our nation. So would you pray with me 
Our Father, we thank you for these amazing proverbs, these memorable things, Lord, that lodge in our hearts. There's a way that seems right, but, but it may lead to death. And righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach. My God, we just, we just pray you'll help us to embody these, these proverbs. And we pray for our nation right now. Lord, we, we have exalted sin in our nation. We pray you'll forgive us. We pray you'll send a Jesus-centered spiritual awakening again to our nation. We pray we'll live to see the day where again righteousness will exalt our nation in the name of Jesus. And we pray righteousness, your forgiveness, the provisions of Jesus shed blood and your grace will fill our hearts today. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.